All right, so these are definitely flying in the opposite direction, but it doesn't really make much difference. So I'm going to smoke the front to let them know we're coming. Now, a top bar hive is different from a Langstroth hive in that <clears throat> all the comb in here is drawn out by the bees. I'm not giving them any guides. There's no frames in here, <clears throat> just raw comb <clears throat> that they build up. Now, this is a one I built with some special features on it, so I want to show you that right away. So this has a removable bottom board, and from here you can see all the hive activity. All right, so if you take a look at this, this is something you really can't see in a Langstroth box, and because if you have a solid bottom board, this will be it won't be accessible to you, but um, you can see the activity in this colony. So somebody can, since I've been in a university course for the last month, I'm asking questions that will be difficult to answer. But <clears throat> so I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> All right. So what's what's going on here is pretty obvious. Pollen collection. Yep. So now I want you to notice how much pollen never gets into cells. Yeah. Wow. Right. So when a colony actually is collecting pollen, they have to collect a lot more than they're actually going to use because or need because they lose a lot. Oh, is now, this mold and pollen? Uh, yeah, it's all mold there, yeah. <clears throat> yeah so over here, right, what's occurring here, now these are wax scales. Oh, wow. All right, so uh, this bottom board is telling us two things. Brood and pollen collection is going on up here, so when we open this, we should see brood in the beginning, yeah. right? Over here, we're going to see new comb, oh. all right, because this is another indication for you is that when they make wax and their wax scales are producing wax, not a lot, so a lot of it doesn't end up on comb. They lose it trying to take it off their abdomen oh. with their legs, bring it up to their mandible, and so a lot of it is lost, right? Huh. All of this pollen was lost, all of the wax was lost. But it's no, this is just not up, right? And this then the back half of it's indicated. So you're going to say there's nothing up here, right? No. Nothing at all. So the, so we're, we're going to expect to see comb. Let's measure it up against the side of the comb. This is, just a, this is just like, so right about to here, we should see comb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I don't know what kind of comb it is. You know, it could be all crossed in there and we can't inspect it. You know, they're going to have some fun with us. But we're going to try this, all right? So let's see. So that's the bottom board. And now what I usually do then is clean it. <clears throat> the other thing you can look for on here are what? Right. Like Raw mite. Yeah. So like if you can look really closely here, you don't see any. I don't see any obvious mites. There are mites in here, but I just don't see any. They're maybe dark brown, right? Dots? Yeah, they're little dots, little brown dots. We'll see some because we're going to do them both. Those are mites down at the end? No, they wouldn't, no, be, they down wouldn't be down there. That's right. Over here. I don't see any. Would you expect to see brood cappings down here too? Well, that's what, <clears throat> that's what you're seeing, right? Okay. So... <clears throat> What's not pollen mm -hmm. in here, these little chewed bits, mm -hmm. that's brood cappings. Mm. Because remember, they have to chew that yeah. out to get out. Yeah. <clears throat> so it's finer. These are just pollen pellets. You could eat them if you wanted to. <laughs> they give you an upset stomach and you're sick for three days, but it's, <laughs> <laughs> they taste good and they're better than COVID. And then you... <laughs> so we're going to do that. And then I just go like that. Whoa. We have another friend on the, so now it's ready to go back in, right? Nice and clean. Oh, yeah. That's wasp. 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 So those wasps are making a little living on the bottom of our colony. Can you get rid of that? You could. It's really interesting. It has larvae in it. What is it? It's a wasp. It's not going to hurt anything. Let's leave it. Let's not kill anything you don't have to kill. Just remember it's there next time you can move back. Yeah, right? Yeah. And it, it, they wouldn't bother the bees? Yeah, they're probably going to take a few bees now and then. But it's not that big a deal. Part of the natural thing you love. We'll take the high road on it. <laughs> but we're going to get more used to it and it won't be as bad later, right? Not necessarily. It can go either way. <laughs> it can get worse. Really? Oh, yeah. So in Thailand, they have the world's 
largest honeybee, Apis dorsata. And uh, one of the local beekeepers was going to climb up a tree and show us how to work that colony. So he did. When he hit it with smoke, it came down and stung everybody and sent some people back home wow. from Thailand. So, yeah. So, yeah, the biggest honeybee in the world. Whoa, well, they're way out here. Oh, yeah. We didn't expect to see them there. No, not really. Uh, they might just be, like, having some fun out here. <laughs> I don't think they're doing anything serious work, but they are festooning, which means that they're probably in the business of building wax really close by that end. Behavior you see there is festooning. Mm -hmm. now, now, people, beekeepers, scientists, nobody really knows what that is, but my sort of amateur assessment of it is that they're probably building this scaffold that the bees on the bottom can produce wax, mm -hmm. and then they bring it up and they attach it to the bar. So right now they're in the process of cleaning this bar off, and they're going to build some wax on it, I'm sure. So mm -hmm. <coughs> mm. we picked the exact bar. Well, cedar out here too. All right, so I was trying to get a couple of clean bars. We're going to try not to kill bees if we can. So bees are going to start flying, so if you don't have your veil on, these don't seem to be very um, active <laughs> bees, but you can never tell. <laughs> yeah, they follow um, movement. That's right. It's like Jurassic Park when, the, <laughs> when they were um, hiding behind the Jeep there. <laughs> don't move. <laughs> Yeah, we thought we would start to see comb right around now, right? Mm -hmm. Now, let's see if our prediction is true from our bottom board. Now, reading the bottom board, ancient, ancient skill. Uh, beekeepers, hundreds of years have been doing that. In the top bar hive, you have to be very careful when you move the comb because you want to make sure it's not attached to another comb and that you're pulling it all apart and wrecking the colony. So you have to be careful. This one was attached a little bit, but you're going to see some new comb on this one. Well, see, that's how they start building. Oh, I pulled some honey out. Uh-oh, oh, there's honey all over the place. All right, so that's how they start building. But yeah, this comb was attached to this one, so they're doing some cross combing over here, which will move to the front if that's the case. Let's see if we can get this comb out. <clears throat> see, if I was here and not in Thailand, what I would have done is I would have come and I would have managed this comb so that it stayed on one frame and not in another. So. And so this is kind of beautiful to look at this one here, but though it's wrecked a little bit, but it's still nice to see. How would you manage it, Bill? Like, I would just break the comb off like I just did yeah. and continue to encourage them to just stay on one comb. Yeah. Okay. Right. So this is you know, not getting a full view of the beautiful brood comb, but let's see what we got here. So with this top bar hide, um, kind of tend to have less swarming because no. they have more work No, it swarms just different. like any other colony. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, they don't, uh, they don't, there's nothing, you don't get any freebies. <laughs> All bees swarm and make you look like a bad beekeeper. All right, we're getting some comb here that's probably going to be able, nice illustration of what a top bar hive comb looks like. There's a very heavy comb. And it's got a lot of honey on it. Might be. We're just trying to find out one thing, right? The queen. The queen. If it's queen right, if this colony's queen right, we're going to close it. Right? But that's all we're trying to do. And we can't figure that out in the honey section. Right? Because that's just honey. Because they'll build honey regardless of whether the queen is there? Yeah. Sometimes they build more when the queen isn't there. Because they don't have anything to do except forage yeah. for honey. So now this shoulder has beautiful so that's how they, that's a classic uh, top bar hive comb. Now you cannot treat this comb disrespectfully. <laughs> In other words, you can't tilt it up like this because it'll break right off, right? So the only way you can handle top bar hive comb is like you can, you can never have that access horizontal with gravity. So you can, you can move it any way you want like this or like this, but you cannot go like this, right? Or it'll break right off. So what I like to do is just lay them down. That's all honey, though, right? So we still don't no, there's brood there. There's, oh, there is? yeah, there's a, there's a section where there might be some brood. See, there's there's drone brood here, so she's still thinking about swarming. And then, can we see anything else in that? No. All right. So let's keep going. It's yellower than mine. 
Is that partly honey and partly food? Yeah, yeah, there's, okay. All right, so let me explain what you're seeing here. Yeah. Oh, so now. That's all. That looks like honey. Who, so I have a wet, red, I have water. So you can clean your hands, but you might want to taste this. Wow. Because this is right out of the comb. Look at this, baby. And it's wow. thick. See what they do, how thick they make their wow. honeycomb? So these are numbered. It's not normally necessary to do that, but um, these are numbered because I know where they'll go back. And in this case, it's really helping. Is it important to make sure that the, um, the uh, slats go back where they came from? Not really, but um, I don't like to disturb a brood nest. So if I'm going to take them out, I like to put them back where they came from because the build the, the bees built that nest to their specifications exactly the way they wanted it. Mm -hmm. And for us to pass judgment on that or think we know better yeah. is pure hubris. It's you know, we don't know better. They know the best way to do it. So we have to follow their lead all the time. All right, so we got that back in. So we don't we still should see some brood up here. So let's see if we can get a comb out. Okay. All right. So now we have everything. We have cap brood. We have, um, so we're going to do that again, but I'm going to hold it this time so it doesn't blow over. But now this frame has everything you'd want to see on a, on a top of high frame. It has honey shoulder, which is beautiful. It has worker brood in the center. It has a little bit of drone scattered in there now and then. And this is where all the action in the colony is at this point. Now, remember we talked about See it all? That's all worker brood. Mm -hmm. right? So we can make some assumptions about this colony. One is that we can say it's queen, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. But in order for us to actually figure that out, we'd have to see eggs in those cells, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Because without that diagnostic, uh, you never really know, all right? Beautiful shape. Look, they built this comb just the shape of this box. Yeah. Isn't that marvelous? Yeah. And it's all new comb this year. Yeah. Right? So that everything you saw, they just built. Within wow. the last. In a top bar hive, do you always have brand new comb every year, or do you um, permit them to work on old comb? I permit them to work on old comb. Um, so, in other words, if this colony dies yep. and there's some comb left over, I'll put it in the next for the next season. They have fairly good survival rate, and I have one in my yard right down the street that is getting to be three years old now, and they um, and it survives every winter. So, and it's only a small little nucleus colony. It's only, uh, it's only about that big up to frame 13. So do you insulate it in the winter, Bill? The I top? didn't insulate that one last no. week. Oh, okay. <clears throat> so, you know, it survived fine. Mm. You know, I had a lot of honey. Beautiful, huh? Yeah. 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 All right, let's get, let's get going here. See the brood, the do brood comb. Do you see any mites? No, but if I see mites, we're, we're in big trouble. You know, if you're if mites are visible on the frame, it's way too late to save that colony. You know, you have to make sure that. You're gonna talk about mites later on. Well, no, we're gonna do a roll. Good. Okay. We'll do one next. All right. You wanna yeah. do that? Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Okay. So let's put this back together. Is this a marked queen? Uh, no. No, I don't really look for the queen ever. I just look for her. The evidence that she's. And there are, there's larvae in here, and there's eggs on some of those cells. So we know this colony is queen right? It's a beautiful queen. So, all right, now we got to put it all back together. So uh, bees will move out of your way. Just got to give them a little bit of touch with the frame, and they'll move out of your way. You hear that sound? It sounded like eating a potato chip. That's a bee that didn't get out of the way. <laughs> So the top row hive has the frames much closer together than the um, the Langstroth, right? No. No. Just about the same spacing because if you look at the bars, right, there's the spacing on the bars here. So there's, you know, the combs here and combs here, and they build it out. You got three-eighths of an inch just like a length. I guess I meant just by the visual, the top part of this. Like these are right yeah, it's next a little wider. to each other. These yeah, are right next to each other as opposed oh, to... Oh, oh yeah, yeah. No, there's, yeah, there's no gap on top, okay. and the top bar hive is just is closed on the top. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there's no way to feed it or treat it from the top because um, you got you have to feed it inside with a feeder mm -hmm. and you have to treat in a completely different way if you wanted to treat for Varroa. Um, and we, we, I am going to treat for Varroa in this colony, but I'm going to do it a little differently. 
Okay, now, so what, what signs you would you would make you continue to look through all of the um, frames for swarm cells? Well, they're as opposed to just you know those first uh, brood frames we just pulled out of here. If this county was intended to swarm, they'd be on those frames. They'd be what? They'd be on those frames. So okay. there's there's no this particular colony, in my opinion, is does not have the urge to swarm right now. So. If you don't, we don't want to like go through the entire hive and disrupt everything. No, um, you don't want to. Every time do that. we open it, we just want to look on a couple of blue frames and then. Go yeah, for I'll show you a technique. I'll tell, show you a technique for figure out swarm cells when we get into Langstroth's colonies. It's a lot easier than you think to figure out where they, if it's going to swarm or not. So for the top of our hive, you can lift a comb like this, right, and put the edges together, and then just slowly go back down, and you can. It's a minimum amount of bees that you um, decapitate at that point. <laughs> this bee was dead from the last inspection. Yeah, right. So, um, yeah, so we're, we're doing good. Let's try to push these together as a group and move on. All right. So what's the advantages of a top bar? Hey, you just saw them. You just, one, there's no heavy lifting at all. One frame at a time. You know, um, all beautiful natural comb. <clears throat> you know, you're not in the, you're not in the bee catalog, <laughs> Langstroth loop yeah you know you're you're not industrial beekeeper you're just doing something beautiful in your backyard or someplace else so it's a very natural and wonderful way to keep bees and well, you, you learn a whole extract. lot you can't, I mean, oh yeah you can crush. extract yeah you're crushing string right. right so you just have to do it that way but if you're trying to make honey this is not your kind right. you know don't you don't raise top bar hives but there are horizontal hives that yes use the length yes the yeah that's a different style. That's horizontal beekeeping. And this is top bar. Okay. All right now we're getting into the comb, the new comb. Okay. All right. We're almost there. How was that honey? Delicious. Really delicious. Yeah. <laughs> See? Oh, was that the queen? No. <laughs> it was just a joke. It was just a joke. Yeah, now that bee will probably survive. They can actually get squashed fairly um, vigorously and still make it. Really? <laughs> Not that big. <laughs> Not that. <laughs> that might have been a like a, on the border. Of, it was a little <laughs> exaggeration. Vigor, vigorousness, but it like, doesn't look. At, well, doesn't look at. Gotcha. You've had some pretty clumsy uh, inspections. <laughs> yeah. In our learning process. So that tastes like banana. Uh oh. Well, no, never intentional. Yeah. So the uh, alarm pheromone that bees give you from their stinger tastes just like banana. As a matter of fact, it's um, banana is the uh, artificial banana flavoring is what they use for, um, it's the same chemical, uh, isopentyl, amylase. So see this bee here, it's signaling its Nazanoff gland, and that one is too. And the reason for that is they're thinking, hey, this colony, we've been out here for a long time. This colony's been open for a long time. What's going on? And it's trying to signal the rest of the bees to come back here. All right, so we're done. Not quite. But you got stung. Yeah, I got a little sting in my hand, but I was just stung by the largest honeybee in the world. Same thing here. I have a little board in here. We could do something similar to what we've looked at the top bar high. All right, so the only thing we can really tell here, it's not as perfect as the top bar hive was, that in this area they're working comb. Now they had old comb. So looks like to me, see this old looking comb here, mm -hmm. the cappings here, mm -hmm. they're cleaning it out and you're going to use it for a brood nest. Okay. So that's what's there. Now I put queen excluders on here because I gave them, I knew I was going to be away. So my strategy here was to keep them all in one box. I have a queen excluder here and this was all food that I had. So you'll notice that every colony is almost configured the same way with a queen excluder here. So there's nobody laying in this top box. This top box would just be uh, honey. Okay. Right? If they're making them. All right, so let's smoke them and let them know we're coming. 
I don't hear a big roar, so. Let me say, let them know we're coming. Yep. That's what we're doing with the smoke. We're introducing ourselves to the bees. And any proper introduction takes a little while. <laughs> so uh, you should give them some time. Uh, How do you keep your smoker going? That's a big problem for you now. It is? Yeah. This is the insulated it's, top. Plenty of bees up here. The pallets didn't stay with me, so my mentor told me to roll up cardboard and put twigs in it too, and then the pallets up the all right, so I'm looking for the queen on the top. You never find her until you do up there. Now, I was kind of curious what they did with this food box I gave them. Now, did they put more honey in it? Because it's been a good flow, right? So they could have put more honey in this, or they're just eating it. So let's see what happened. Why didn't you use a deep instead of a medium? Food? That's all I, well, I had deep combs that had honey in them. All right. So that's why. Okay. All right. So, all right. So, yeah. When I put it on there, you could lift it with one hand. So now it's like a little bit of heavy. It's real heavy, actually. Ugh. All right. So that's what they're doing there. Now, so if you really wanted to see if this colony was thinking about swarming or already has. Something very simple. Germans do this all the time. Europeans in general do this. A little technique I'm going to show you. You take your brood box, lift it, slide it backward a little bit, and then lift it up and take a look. Oh wow! Yeah. Swarm cells. Oh. Right. So that's all the queens, right? Swarm cells are queen cells. So here's some. There's a button. These are drone. All right, so we're going to actually take them off of there. And uh, that's drone. That's drone, right? That's drone comb that they built between uh, the bottom of the box, the bottom of these frames, and the screen. Because that screen was bowed down a little bit, so they had some room in there. So they put drones up in there. Now, if you uncap these drones, you can look at them for, you know, you can see what kind of condition they're in, when they were capped. You tell a lot about them, but we're not going to really do much of that. For, uh, but, but you can look at them for Varroa, but it won't give you any indication of the extent oh. of the colony's uh, infestation. You can't see any so Varroa in any of those. Those are larvae? Those are pupa. Pupa. Because the they're sealed. For the drones. Mm -hmm. Right? That's what I thought was going to be a queen when I looked at it. Uh-oh. Yeah, no, that's just uh, okay. That's just drones. Now, they'll eat this stuff. See, I'm eating it. Mm -hmm. So they recycle protein in the colony. They do that. I don't see any indication that these this bees are ready to swarm. You don't see a I don't see any cells here, cell. but I do see a cup. So I want to show you what a queen cup looks like. All right, so here's a queen cup. See them down here? You can see them inside. They're over there. See that little cup right there? Way well, inside. Here. See it? Where? Over here yeah. and here. But do you see anything inside of them? That's the question. No. All right, so there's nothing in there, but it doesn't mean that there aren't some that do have something. But I just don't get the feeling that this colony is ready to swarm. Do not touch bees with your stinger first. So it's completely full, so would you add another box to that? You know, I'm going to run this as one colony. It's not completely full. Remember, I have a queen excluder in a whole other box, but I'm keeping the brood down here. Yeah. Right, so I'm running it as a single, and they're doing exactly what you would expect a single to do. They're storing everything above the brood box. So they need every frame here for brood. I think about eight frames. And sometimes they can't even, they don't even have the room to store pollen if it's a good queen. And they'll start to store pollen in that top box. So you can get, because they can squeeze through a queen excluder and bring pollen up to cells. Mm -hmm. Right? So that they'll, they'll, we'll see what they're doing. But I think this is one colony we might want to consider doing a sugar, um, a, a alcohol wash on. All right, to see what the mite count is, all right? Yep. So, because since we don't see any swarm indication, that means that this brood has been here for a while. It didn't swarm, so it didn't take a lot of row with it, so it should have its full complement of infestation, right? Mm -hmm. That's the way you can check quick, you know, but it doesn't necessarily guarantee that there aren't swarm cells. But if it's really ready to go, they'll be hanging down all over those frames. 
Let's get it back. So, knocking it over. Ooh, you guys, I gotta get out of the way here. <laughs> now you just have to be careful that you don't lose the stand and you don't want to get off the rails because you're, you're squashing it. Right, so they built drone between, oh, there's some more sparks. Those are buttons. Those are not queen cells because oh. there's nothing in that. All right. But if it was, but if it's sauce, that is what it would look like, right? No, it would be, it would be much bigger than that. Oh. And I see that's drone even though that's a little bit deceiving. So they, they're using this queen excluder to their advantage with a little bit of space. So all of this is drone. Now, so some of these are different stage drones. So this is what they call a purple eye stage. Right, so that's a pupa. That's um, in a, probably that's um, been capped for maybe four days and it sees starting to get coloration in its eye. Mm -hmm. And then when, it, when it, it progresses a little bit further, it goes into this stage where it's, oh, where are you going? where it gets more body color. See, the body oh, yeah. colors come out. Wow. And then the eyes get darker. See how yeah. the eyes are getting darker? That's really a uh, total purple stage. So there's so how much now, longer? Right? See then, um, how much longer uh, do they Oh, have they're kids? alive right oh, now. Oh, they are. Okay. Yeah, they're but kind of stay they're dying. Oh, they won't be alive <laughs> very long, but you can see them kind of moving. So how much longer till that one with the eyes turns into a fuzzy little guy? Well, well yeah, that that's pur the purple eye stage probably has day 13. So, um, you know, Drone take a long time. 26 days. Yeah, wow. so 21 days to, to emerge, and then so you got a long time for that to go. So, oh, okay. so that's probably not. That's why Varro are attracted to them also. <laughs> All right, so we have, um, so that's the different, so you can look over here, you can see the different stage of, stages of, look at how they, this little array of drone pupa that the queen laid out right in here, and all about the same time, mm -hmm. right? She laid this all out. But if you're careful with your observation, you're going to see another little cell right there that has a little tiny one-day-old larva in it right there. See it? Way down there. Nice population of bees, would you say? Absolutely. Plus, look at that. we got a nice population up there, too. So that's only half the colony. All right, so. Um, Why would you crowd them like that? I'm not crowding them. That's all. <laughs> 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 they maxed out. I guess I'm, I'm, I'm wondering why, um, why you wouldn't add another box for their... Um, you well, it's uh, I do have I do have another box on it, just not for the brood. Right, right. So um, that you can you can this is a strategy you can do this yourself. You don't need more than one box for brood. Like never. Okay. If you you just have yeah, you have to do okay. the number. Yeah. Okay. So you can always do it this way yep. with one box. We don't do this a lot in uh, in Connecticut. Right. We usually use two brood boxes. So when I put this back together. Mm -hmm. For you, I'm going to take that queen excluder off, and we're going to go with two boxes. Just, just, <laughs> just for you. It's making you nervous, and I don't like that. All right, so um, I have two hive tools. I'm going to show you how to use these two hive tools. Uh, I like it because you can pick up your uh, frame uh, right right equally. All right, so we're going to have to get some more. All right, so uh, just do me a favor. Don't put the lighter in there. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Just grab some of that stuff and pack it. No, no, just the fuel and pack it. Pack it right in there. Oh yeah, no, no, yeah. You need a lot. Of, yeah, you need like yeah. Now keep packing it in. What is that? Keep packing it in. So if you go, it's not. It's not that hot. Yeah. Keep packing it in there. All right. So let's make some space to move frames out of here. Well, let's be really kind to the bees. We're going to be. You know, we want them out of the way. Now, are they shown? They're not really showing any behavior that would uh, alarm us, right? Right. So they're not showing aggressive behavior. They're not lined up looking at us. Not all of them are. These are over here. See how they're? See this little? This is an awareness behavior. See it? Yeah. They know we're here. And see the the little antennas are going all directions. They're wondering what's going on here. And these guys are lined up now. If they if they actually respond to smoke. See, so they, they're, they're responding to smoke. They're turning around and going down. When that happens, you know you can control them with smoke. If that didn't happen, yeah, right, if you, if you pass your hand over the top of the colony, you start coming out wanting to sting you, you know you're, you know, that's a fairly defensive colony. So um, in this case, they're going to be fine, I think, until, until they're not. All right. Does their disposition matter, like, if they have enough? 
clone or not clone or enough? No, it's all it's all genetic. Okay. And so that's why you requeen. So I'm gonna try to take this end frame out. And I'm going to do it like this, one tool on each side. So when I lift it, it's going to come straight up. See it? And um, then, then, you, then there's this little acrobatic. That wasn't, that, that's the kind of behavior that gets you in trouble. <laughs> what is that, three times today already? Oh, I can get stung a little bit more. Um, uh, okay, so are they out here even working on this end frame? Wow. So we were nervous that they wouldn't have enough brood area, but let's see what's going on. So you're going to have to hold these. <laughs> All right. Just part of being a beekeeper. All right, she is out here laying. There she is. See that yellow dot on her? Yeah. There she is. Right there. Oh, wow. She has a yellow dot, and she's laying on this frame, eggs all over the place, and brood. She's way out on frame 10. So we're going to do a, we're going to do a roll on this column, yeah. right? So we're going to do a sugar roll. So what do we want to do? I mean, you want to protect this queen, make sure she doesn't get into the alcohol wash, right? <laughs> right? So she gave us an opportunity to do that. So we got to pick her up. And to do that. So we pick her up. Well, don't go anywhere. How many times have you gotten stung so far? You don't get stung by queens. They don't do no, that. You, all the ones around guarding her, you just kind of reach right in there. Yeah, that's fine. It doesn't hurt. So there she is. And you don't want to squeeze her and do anything crazy. Now, I have her in a wrong position. Right? Because... Uh, you know, I should have her by the wings at this point because I don't know. I have any idea if I'm going to be able to get her in this box. She should come out toward the light. Or did she go out the bottom? There she is. Come on. Come on. Just cooperate now. That's a good one. always head to the bottom. Oh, you got her. Look at that. Yeah, we could kill her right, right now, too, <laughs> if we don't put a couple of bees. Yeah. Yeah. So they... they even just a short period of time handling a queen like I did and, and having her in this cage is nice. I could put her in my pocket. We could do anything to this colony now. We know we're not going to kill the queen, right? Big advantage. But what we really want to do is put a few workers in there so that she knows she's still part of the colony. So you got to do it like this. Just grab any worker and then put him in. So wait till she starts to walk up to, and, and they'll go right in there and help her. Yeah, I don't. Now let's put a couple more. <laughs> oh, 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 that one wanted to come out. Yeah, I'm putting him through that one little. I should have bought that. So our question is: Couldn't you have left her on her frame and just took a frame from the other side of the hive and use that for your varroa test? So then you don't mess with her. She's happy, and you're happy. And you can do that. Yeah. Yeah. But I, what's so keeping you? So the thing about queens is they don't hear well. So if you tell them stay over here, they, <laughs> I mean, they might do whatever they want. So I'm going to put it I know, because I can't, I, but ah. I know I can't do what okay. you're doing. So you will be able to do it on the way. All right. So there they are. She's in there safe. Put her in her pocket. Now, the thing is, don't forget. Don't forget. Don't forget. Put her back. <laughs> you're eating dinner and you're hearing this <laughs> coming out of your pot. So, oh, geez. Which colony was it? <laughs> All right, so so now we want to make sure that we get nurse bees in our in our shake. So somebody will take all the stuff out of that can and get the junk out, I mean out of that little box and get the junk out of it too. Yeah, knock that stuff out. <laughs> so uh, there's nurse bees on here, of course. I'm not gonna do that yet. I'm gonna show you guys a little bit about how you figure out where nurse bees are. There's plenty of nurse bees on here. You can find nurse bees around brood, or you can find them um, around pollen because they're getting pollen to feed bees, so that will be nurse bees, all right? So this frame is is a good candidate. We could use that if we want, but we're going to dig a little deeper. You want to try it? No, I know you All right, okay, so. So we're going to move these over a little bit. All the shoulders on these frames are clean, and if you notice that they're all smashed together, all right, so we're going to put that colony back that way. We're going to look at this next frame just for, you don't need the dual, Thing anymore because you can just lift them. Now, when you're lifting frames out, you're not pulling them with your back, and you can do that, you know, and it hurts after a while. So you're you're actually going to use your, see my knuckles are on those frame rails, and I'm using my, the strength of my fingers and hands to pull it up, not my back, because your back will stop working. Nice, rude. Look at that, nice cap rude. And all of this is laid out, and no indication of a swarm. So let's use this frame. 
All right, so now it goes a little quick. But before we, we're going to use this frame as our um, mic check. Because there's lots of brood there, so we know we got a lot of recipes. Before we do that, hand me that baby right there. We're going to fill this up to its line. And give me that alcohol. I'm using 90% alcohol. <clears throat> 91% isopropyl alcohol is the absolute best. Of course, you couldn't get it until recently. <laughs> but it's, um, you can get it anywhere now, but you couldn't get it. There's little lines in here. This is called a quick check. There's little lines in here that it fills up. All right, so, so I'm pouring it in, pouring the alcohol into the line indicated on the little device. So I've got it filled to where I want it. So now we're going to have to have another brave soul hold this. So it's, see, it's filled to the line. The easy check line is on the inside. There's little lines on the inside of this. Right, there's two of them. See the little lines in there? That's how you fill it up. But they come with instructions, so you don't need to. <coughs> so now we're going to shake our bees into that box, and we're going to do some tricks with them. So let's move them. You guys got to get out of the way. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to shake bees in here, but then we don't want, we only want nurse bees in here. I'm going to feel like this is going to blow away. <laughs> right, so let's try to get some in there. All right, so we got a bunch in there, but we're going to do this. We want the foragers to fly, the nurse bees will stay. Oh. A half cup scoop there. Now you're not going to have to do this fast. Because when they hit the alcohol, they're going to die immediately. Right, so I'm pretty confident that most of these bees in here now are nurse bees. Because right? you can see them flying. There's some drones in here. but okay, So we're going to scoop out a half a cup of bees. Now, the thing is, we want exactly a half a cup of bees. We don't want a quarter of a cup. We don't want any other. Now, you're going to start swallowing it. Just easy. With, actually, with 91% alcohol, you really don't have to do much because if it grow, it just fly right off the thing. Any other mixture, and they don't. All right, so since we have um, this comb void of devoid of bees, take a look. You know, pass that around. Look for eggs. Look for uh, larvae. Look for cap rooms. Look for everything you think you, you want to know. Yeah. <laughs> There's a bunch of and we should be testing for mice now. Yes. Yes. Okay. Hey. How you doing? All swirled up. All swirled up. This is not a testimony of my beekeeping at all. No mites. There's just no mites. And you see little black guys. It has nothing to do with me. Yeah, I'm sorry. Would you treat this cone? No. That can happen. Yeah. That could happen. Sorry about that. You didn't get to see a mite. Uh, but you know, we can do another one. But I don't think we have time for that. So let's let's uh, let's just be satisfied with. So what's the threshold of treatment? Oh, so you would have the threshold of treatment would be um, oh so like three hundred bees in there with a half a cup. Right, right. So it's three percent or two percent, whatever you want to do. So you just number, just just multiply that three hundred bees first number by two or three. Right, okay. So either if you're going for three percent, it'll be nine mites. Nine mites. Okay. If you're going for two percent, it'll be six mites. I would treat at six. Six. Okay. Good. But six mites. I mean, you guys should be impressed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's some kind of a, you know, and, and what do you celebration. Start looking at the comb, did you did you analyze that um, your your mic comb already? Yes. Oh, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, where's the mic? Yeah, you can pass that around. There's nothing to see. Though. There's nothing to see. Oh. So they should not even. Wow! Well, oh, wait a minute. There's something wait. on the bottom. You're swimming there. No. I don't really want to do another. No, no, that's not. They're, they're, they're just so easy to see. All right, so that means you got no mites in there. I guess it's. I have none in this sink. 
All right, so I'm a scientist. Nice. Yes, you're a scientist for I'm sure. A scientist. Yeah, like I, I work with I'll them all day long, so I get it. <laughs> <laughs> that sample. Twenty-five. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I'm a quarter cup. No, so that little black speck is black? not a mark. It's very, it's very discernible. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's close this one up because we're, we're torturing it a little bit. <laughs> but what we want to do is take a look at that top box just for fun because um, we want to see what they did because that's that thing weighs about 60 70 pounds mm. so they put a lot of honey in there and now we're going to give we're going to give them the full access to that box for the queen to rear fruiting but by keeping the queen in this box down here we have a nice brood pattern across all of those frames <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> so will you reuse now, this is drinkable. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Just once. Sorry. <laughs> so, so you reuse the alcohol, right? You can reuse this alcohol if you wanted to strain it. Yeah. You know, you could reuse it, yes. Is yes. There's so many times that you could reuse it. Well, in this case, we could reuse it right now because, right. like, all we got to do is take the bees out. Right. Right, and dump them, right. and then this alcohol has no throw it in it. Right. So I'll I'll save this and then we'll do one more. Uh, okay. If you no. had raw in there, then you really wouldn't be able to do it. Yeah. You'd have to strain them through a coffee filter, and then what you do is you get the raw out. Then you can reuse the alcohol. It's really good to reuse the alcohol. Yeah. Okay. All right. So people say, well, you killed three hundred bees. Well. You know, you guys get blood tests and things, right? Where you kill a bunch of blood cells and it doesn't kill you. It doesn't even harm you, actually does some good because you're looking for something, right? It's a diagnostic tool and it won't harm the bees to lose 300 bees. A thousand bees a day are dying in this time. Right, this time of year, they age out. The queen's replacing them. Her, her, um, her recruitment rate is higher than the, than the death rate of the colony. So the population stays up. So just keep that in mind. It's a thousand dying naturally every day. So 300 bees that you've sacrificed for this particular procedure is not going to harm you. Well, where are the dying ones going? Because I don't see them around the hive. They take them far away? No, they they die any they die in the field. They die some die in the front. No, but if there's if they die inside the colony, you ought to take the bees, take them out, and, and fly them away. Fly them away? Yeah. Oh. They grab them. Yeah, they grab them and fly away. With them. Yeah, this is a clean, this is a, this organism is extremely clean. clean. That's why you can eat everything inside. All right, I'm going to, how you doing with that frame? Good, good. Nice, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Queen's laying right in the middle. Should have put her back in by now. I was saying, don't forget to put her back in. No. Thank you so much. See how nice and clean those shoulders are? I want you to notice that because I want you to keep your colony the same way because it makes beekeeping easy. See how I was able to take that end frame out? Because it's not all jammed up against the side of the box. So you, I'm going to show you how to keep them that way. So you bring them, you know, put your frames back together just like this. So this is a 10 frame box. Now, you take your hive tool. And squeeze them. See them dragging that drone around? Yeah. They're going to eat it. Oh. <laughs> they treat drones horribly. <laughs> you push, you push them all the way that way and push them this way the same way. You're squeezing anything that has developed inside those. Now, it's almost three quarters of an inch of space here, and over here, there's less. So what I like to do is, is move them all together moving just a little bit so there's an equal space on both sides. Right. This is this is hive management, right? So this is not you know biology, it's just hive management. And that's what you should do every time to make certain that your colony is always workable. So you right. clean the shoulders and the sides in the beginning. The stuff at the top like you No, I leave the bur cones. I leave all of that for the bees. Yeah okay. I, I leave that you know some yeah. people are scrapers. I'm not. 
what about when they so, when yeah, they create see look like they're taking that one back yeah. what? what about when they create cone between the two frames yeah well see they won't do that out. here yeah but what if they did it all yeah the then you then you have that yeah well you know you got to try to deal with it it's not easy to deal with i understand it's a problem because they <coughs> they're building off the cone yeah this right. is drawn cone. yeah yeah but you can get it like we might get it in that box that we <coughs> that we hide because mm -hmm. i put some black frames in there so and they're in between other drawn cones. Yeah. So, you know, they might do that there. Mm -hmm. Don't forget the queen, though. She wants to go back. Because... Now, the queen <laughs> is, um, I think it is. I forget everything. Is she come? No, she's not. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait, what happened? Oh is this a magic trick? Oh, no. No. Wait, you got there. Where is she? There she is. Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right, so what we're, we're going to try to get her out of here easy enough, and she might, you know, we got to be careful because if she was being made flight ready, she would fly now. Yeah. But she, you see how fat she was? Yeah. Yeah, she's all ready to. All right. Okay. All right, easy as that. Queen is safe. Back in the box. All right, so? great. Yeah. For those of us who are not quite uh, comfortable handling our queens, can we use queen clips to... You can, you know, if you're not... A, yeah, you can You can use a queen clip or any way that you want to. I mean, so if you wanted to mark a queen, say, for instance, you use something like this. All right, let me show you. If I could find a drone. Let's find a drone here somewhere. And we'll mark a drone. And I'll show you how to do it with this device. And you can use this to mark a queen. I did that this year with that. You did? Yeah, it's pretty messy. She didn't, didn't get it in the right spot. <laughs> oh, you did like a, you did it, you did it, you did it cheap. I don't see any drones. You guys see any drones? Yeah. There's, there's yellow on her. Yeah, you gave her like a cheap paint job. Yeah. yeah Some, I've seen people paint their eyes and everything. It's kind of embarrassing it's every time I find her. It's really pitiful. <laughs> Yeah, the wings, they paint them together, and the queen keeps no, laying. No. All right, I don't see any drones. We'll try that later on if we find one. Anyway, you get them, and you put them in here, and then you, and then you paint them. All right, so we're not going to put the queen excluder back on, right? So we're going to let this county come back to a two-county version. Who wants to feel the weight of this colony and put it back on top? <laughs> that's, what I, that's what I thought. <laughs> so this is our dilemma when we have our hive boxes apart, getting them back together. I'm going to show you how to do it. We're smoking. We can't get them in and clear the shoulders. Well, and... Got to remember that. Um, Very stressful. You, yeah, but you have to just learn, right? Because, you know, beekeeping is a couple hundred years old, so it can be done. You know, so it's not like it can't be done. It's just so I did smoke them. They're a little bit off the frame shoulders now, right? right you got to move at this point. Right, You're gonna get it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, flip it up. You put it on there. Now, don't you have to smoke the bottom one too? Nope. I'm not gonna do that. Now put it on with a little bit of an angle when you put it on. That's it. Keep going. Now go go way over here. Yeah. Just leave a little angle. Put the back where it's supposed to go. Now, so he's got it in a decent position. I think I put it a little bit differently. Was that heavy? Yeah, it's got some weight to it. Go, man. So you just Probably like slide them like this. Wrong. See, you did you do this, and it gives it the bees a chance to get away. Watch. Mm -hmm. See him? Didn't kill them. We killed that one, but we didn't kill all. We weren't counting them. We don't really count the dead ones. <laughs> That's what you do right away. Go like this, you know. Pretty good, right? So you're not squashing them, you're not smashing them. So it's a technique you can try to use. Minimal contact first. Yes, minimal contact first and then slide it, then twist it like that. And the closer you get it to the final twist, the easier it'll be, right? Just don't plop it down and then because you'll kill a lot of bees. And then the next time you look, you'll see them all and go, oh, yeah. I did that. Right, these we want to get back in the colony. So we're just going to pound them here on the ground and they will fly back up. Yeah, they're going to they're come up now and go right into the colony's entrance. So you'll clean all that stuff off the excluder, Phil? Yeah, I use a heat gun for that. Oh. All right, so I made a little contraption that I could put this on. 
right? And then I use my heat gun. It's an industrial heat gun, but you can buy them at Home Depot. They're very inexpensive. And then you just go, and all the wax just melts and falls off. Kind of nice. Seriously, no, I'm serious. I guess. I don't know. I use the heat gun because it gives me a lot of temperature. You know, this is the uh, heat gun is very, very. Uh, all right. We're getting a um, signal to put that top back on. <laughs> yeah, that's not usual. Those back colony over there would have stung everybody in the crowd. What do you want this one to know? Queen right, so put the QR, 618, QR, and uh, row check zero. Uh, 